79. Calculate the delta G notch for each of the following reactions from the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. So we have hydrofluoric acid, HF, aqueous, plus water, H2O, yields hydronium ion, H3O plus, plus your fluoride ion, which is F minus. They tell us that we're at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, and they give us a Kp value of 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, so whenever they give you an equilibrium constant, a K value, and they're looking for your Gibbs free energy, the delta G, there's only one formula that you're going to use. There's two variations of it, depending on what you're actually solving for, whether if you're solving for delta G or if you're solving for K. Now, in this case, we're solving for delta G, so it's best to memorize the formula as this. Just delta G equals negative RT ln of K. Let's go over the variables, right? We're solving for delta G, which means that we should know the RT and the K value. Now, R is a constant value. That's why they didn't give it to you. R is 8.314, and that's joules per mole times Kelvin. Now, I just like to memorize it as just 8.314 for the whole entire you know, chemistry course. It's just easier for me. But just know that if you're using Kelvin here, that means that the temperature has to be in Kelvin. They gave it to you in Celsius. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly convert from Celsius to Kelvin. You add 273. Now, to be more specific, you would add 273.15. That's the exact conversion. So 25 plus 273.15 is 298. That number is like ingrained in my head. Room temp 25 always is 298 Kelvin. So we just add the 0.15. And that's the temperature that we're going to use. Ln of K. They gave me a Kp here. Notice how I did not write Ln of Kp because it could literally be any equilibrium constant, Ka, Kb, Kc, Keq. Any equilibrium value is fine. So in this case, we're just plugging in the 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, we got all the variables. Let's plug in and solve. Delta G, notch, that just means standard, is negative, the 8.314, 8.314, times the, the temp, which is the 298, 298.15, and then we're going to end it with multiplying it by the natural log, that's the ln, of 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. If you're using the TI-84, which is what I love to use, um, we're going to plug this all in in one shot. Calci will understand what we're trying to do. Delta G equals, the negative is in the formula, so negative 8.314, times 298.15, whoop, not 0, 5, 1, 5. And then I'm going to say times by the ln, that's this button right here. And now I have a scientific notation value, times 10 to the. I love to use the EE button when using scientific notation because then the calculator knows to group that together. So I'm going to say 7.2. The EE button is right here where this comma is. So I have to say second comma. That means times 10 to the, and then I'll just put negative four. Close the parentheses, press enter. Easy as that. One, uh, 17,937, we'll just call it that for now. And the units that didn't cancel were joules per mole. Joules per mole. Now, this is a really, really big number. That's why your delta G values are generally always in kilojoule per mole. So even though they didn't state it in this problem, I'm just going to convert it into kilojoules. Joules to kilojoules is always dividing by 1,000. So I can just take this number, divide by 1,000, and then use my appropriate sig figs. I used five sig figs here, and there was only two here. So my answer should have two sig figs. So I'm going to take that 17.9 and just round it to 18. Delta G equals 18 kilojoules per mole, and we are done. That is the answer to this problem. Oh, yeah. Okay, what do you think? Memorize the formula, because chances are it's not going to be on your test or quiz. You probably have to memorize it, and that's it. Yeah, thank you so much. Hopefully this helped. Talk to you soon, and have a great day. Okay, bye-bye.